80% of their white students every year. But the middle class families still here, white and minority, are becoming increasingly vocal. The biggest hurdle for supporters of public schools is a cap on state spending for education. The state government's way of saying enough is enough. No more increases in school spending. The state froze budgets at the 1993 levels, allowing only small yearly adjustments, not enough to cover the rising costs. As a result, this year, MPS made its biggest cut yet, $32 million. Many parents blame the school board for being too willing to make those cuts. At a board meeting a few weeks ago, so many people showed up that the board tried to limit the number allowed in the main auditorium. There was little real communication. This system has attacked the business of home act, art, music, shops in many of our institutions because we have made cuts. More importantly, Mr. we have... Mr. Your, your time is up. Oh, I don't doubt that, but let us hope that at election time, some people on this board also have their time up. The other part that we will need to address is the cost issue. We cannot continue to have the cost of employees rise at twice the rate of the revenues. And so those and unless we are You do have to listen to us. But you aren't listening, you aren't hearing. I'm wondering if you even see us. We need people who love these kids and who will fight for them. But a majority of this board was swept into office on a platform of support for school vouchers and financial reform of the school bureaucracy. There's so much fat in Milwaukee public schools to this day. There's so much inefficiency and unproductiveness that we've been able just to screen, get, get, get away the, cut away a bit of the fat in order to reduce the staffing levels we have so far. The, other great the mayor also argues that more money would not automatically improve schools. The amount of money that they spend on kids now in Milwaukee is at about the state average. It's, it's not like it, it's a starved system, and I'm lobbying to help get them more state money. But performance matters even more than money, and so we can't let money be an excuse. Inside the schools, the principals we met say they are doing more than ever to be efficient and to get results. I think that's the thing that's keeping me going because I believe that I can make a difference. And if I sit and cry over what I don't have or the lack of resources that I'm getting, then I, can't, I won't be able to do anything. So we have to make uh, uh, lemonade from lemons. And let's go out into the community and try to get what we need. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Let's go home. And even this principal, in one of the poorest neighborhoods in town, doesn't have the toughest cases. All right, eight, seven, six, and five are clear now. Those are in the high school, where other professionals are doing their best with what parents send them. My choice or no choice remain in the system. The city high schools are geared a little better to, to handling outrageous misbehavior. This stuff comes along that, you know, you, you, you try and tell a civilian and they just don't believe you. Now when are you going to get the rest of that dress? Bayview High School is one of Milwaukee's good schools, but it's a long way from what it once was. When it was built in the 1920s, it was the pride of the community high on a hill. 
the means to a promising middle-class future for the children of German, Italian, and Irish immigrants who settled the neighborhoods. Today, more than half of the school's white families have moved on. Poor minority kids from other parts of town are bussed in to fill out the classrooms. Come on, everyone, let's go. First impressions of the school can be misleading. The hallway rowdiness can give the impression there's not a lot of learning going on here. How do we look on that end? Larry, we've got enough people. Could you personally walk Harry to class? Just, just capture him and walk him to class. But Bayview High is under control, managed by a group of professionals who now have to concentrate on getting kids to show up every day and stay in school long enough to graduate. Okay, we're clear three west. Principal Bob Crace, after more than 30 years as an educator, still helps with the sweep, as they call it. It's designed to keep kids from cutting class, to make sure the students are prepared and ready to learn. It's one of the main jobs of Crace and his staff, including assistant principal Al Gober. Let me know if he needs remediation. To go into a math class, no paper, no pencil. If you were going to hire someone, who would you hire? The kids with the paper and pencil or you? The kids with the paper and pencil? Well, get in with that group, man. Come on now. I mean, this is not rocket scientists. Who would you hire? And until you can say, hey, I'd hire me because I'm the best. Come on now. You know what? Go. Hustle. Hustle. Go. The next day he went to her and started cussing her out. And I just need your permission to send him home. He just said, I said, essay. You said, cut her out. Well, I'm not going to say what you said. Well, you just had to say, cut her out. Well, it's the same thing. You were What's using profanity. Sport? I don't know, but man, this school is garbage, bush. Hey, you, you made us get it in. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Come on, come on, get you out of here. They don't have many serious fights at Bayview, but the constant level of tension means that most adults of the school have become counselors along with her other duties. She says that, no, she wants you home. And no, well, if she wants you off, she bought me today, man. Because she said she dropped you off just to you to come in, run that thing in. Now, you, you, come here, Domingo. Domingo. Did you ever think the time would come in education when counselors would be every bit as important to you as science teachers and good coaches? No, I didn't. And, they, and it's true, they are. I think we're doing a lot more raising of children than we had to in the past. We have to set them up for education. We have to get them ready to go to that science class and learn. And if that's talking to a counselor the first after a weekend on a Monday morning because of whatever happened to them over the weekend, then that's what we have to do. I want to be playing golf, but I'll stay here for you. Okay, because i got to talk to you about something that's going on with my mom and everything. Now, how do you describe a family? I did my report on anorexia because that... If we have 1,700 students, I swear there's 1,700 ways to describe a family, the values they bring to this school. Um, it affects not only the mind, but also the body. And if you could somehow examine with some of these kids what they came from. Broken homes, are no parents, no, no parents at all. And I don't know how they do it. I mean, it's, it's sort of like a, a war veteran. You know, why aren't they in shock, or why aren't they nuts, or something like that? Because some of these kids, I don't know how they live through it. Woof. Bayview is using volunteer parents to encourage other parents to be more active in the school. Is it hard to get parents involved? Very, very hard. We have a school, about 1,700 students, and I would say we average about between 12 and 20 parents that are actively involved in the school. Out of 1,700, yes. 12 to 20, and that's all? Yes. Is it good intentions, just no time, or just no interest? I think it's a little bit of both. Too many parents expect Bayview's faculty and administrators all right, guys, please take a seat. to raise their kids during the daytime hours, as well as educate them. So, despite declining budgets, the school has had to come up with creative ways to deal with the modern family of high school students, especially those who present the greatest challenges. For example, the school set up a special class two blocks away in basement rooms donated by a church. They call it the outpost. The students enrolled here were not making it at the high school because they became parents early or began working full time or got in trouble outside school. For any school system, 
These are some of the toughest cases. The home life is not really good in a lot of these situations. And uh, you got to give the student credit for being as good as he is. Phil Maloney is the Bayview High School teacher who runs the outpost. He covers every academic subject, so the kids have to deal with only one adult at school. He, he's one of the most remarkable people I've probably ever met. Section one. I, I owe him a lot. I, if it wasn't for outpost, I'd, I'd probably be a high school dropout. Phil Maloney has many success stories, and Clip Lodansky is one of them. As a freshman and sophomore, Clint had made passing grades, but then he started skipping classes. I would go there at 7.30 in the morning, and I would look around, and I'd say, this isn't me, and I would walk right out them doors from which I came, you know, and I was slipping so far down, and I, I, I knew it that I couldn't come back up within the school. If it wasn't for this alternative form, I'd probably be panhandling somewhere on a corner or something like that. So I definitely have gratitude for the for that outpost education. Clint Bodansky's mother, Melody, is divorced and often works double shifts at an auto parts factory. Melody, Clint, and his sister live in a trailer park a few miles from Bayview High and close to Melody's job. It does take time away from my kids, and it has. I've worked seven days a week. I've been there 20-some years, and I've worked, you know, 10-hour days, 12-hour days. And believe it or not, I don't really advocate if you have a choice. You know, get two parents. <laughs> Answer the phone, Sarah. Clint's very good about keeping up a good front. Thank you very much. He was pretty slick. Uh, so I had no idea until anything? the grades started coming through. Off a bit. And then also, once there was a request for me to come to school, that was a real clear indication there was problems. Hey, hey, Mr. Maloney, too bad there wasn't a thousand of you. Not only is there a shortage of teachers like Phil Maloney, the outpost itself is the sort of extra program the Milwaukee School Board says it may not be able to afford much longer. People want the best for their kid, and by and large, their kid only. Uh, that there isn't a, a general concern for educating the masses as there once was. When parents are absent and resources are shrinking, schools such as Bayview High must rely even more on the dedication of their staffs. But there is another Milwaukee public school that doesn't have any more money than Bayview does. Yet it has a national reputation for success and a waiting list trying to get in. What makes the difference? I know you're visiting a lot of schools, and I know that you're hearing principals talk about their schools and telling you how wonderful they are, but we truly believe that we are the best school anywhere. It's called Rufus King, named for an early educator in Milwaukee. Most of your math classes will be held within this corridor. It is predominantly black in a black neighborhood. Whites have to drive or be bussed in. Yet there's a waiting list of families of all colors trying to get their kids in here. Rufus King doesn't have any more money than Bayview has. But King has been set aside by the school system as a magnet school, designed for those parents who expect their kids to go on to college. Come on, hurry up. Principal Tom Balistrieri says that's the first reason his students do well. They are expected to. College Bound is built into the official name of the school. This is the place good teachers prepare you for the next step and beyond. It was very isolated, exactly. Egypt, what isolated them? Our expectations of our kids, first and foremost, is that you are here to be educated. Now, what is your next step set? Number four. And I think they live up to that expectation. Done. A lot of people, they would be surprised if I told them that we were about 65% black. They think of, quote, good schools as being white schools. And so that's a perception that we always try to bat down if we can. We're a melting pot. There's so much mixture and so much exposure to many different ideas. You're exposed to everything and you learn a whole bunch of other things that you wouldn't normally learn. Different people, different ideas. And it all clicks together. Yeah.